Jake Ludington here at HPE Discover, and I'm here with Nigel Upton. And HP has developed its own uh, Internet of Things platform, if you will. And what is it about this platform that is different from all of the other options that are out there? Uh, our platform, we call it the Universal IoT platform. Um, as you know, there's a lot of platforms out there. The reason our customers tell us they like this platform versus other platforms is really three things. One is I can connect any type of device. Two is I can connect over any type of network. And three is it scales. It scales big time. So how do you scale better than everybody else? What we've done is we've taken a lot of our telco assets that have been uh, telco hardened and we've used them as building blocks to be able to build out our universal IoT platform. It's in very modular, but it has all of the basic functions that you require as well as analytics, device control, data ingest, data validation. Uh, we format it into a single standard based data model. We use the 1M2M standard. And then we provide uh, access at the top, the cloud, which allows us to be able to do data integration, application creation, building of microservices. So it's a very comprehensive, but very, very scalable platform. And now, does this require people to use specific software from like HP software, or is this uh, fairly agnostic in terms of the types of applications you can interface with? Uh, the platform itself is a software platform, uh, and it runs on industry standard, and it runs on the cloud. Um, the ability to integrate applications, you can integrate any type of application, it's completely open and designed so that you can integrate very quickly and we do a lot of pre-integration through our partner program, we do a lot of testing, we take all of that headache out of the, uh, out of the, out of the customer's hands and do it for them so they get faster time to market. And then you mentioned that you can um, basically use any type of network, so yeah. you're talking um, cellular obviously. Um, traditional networks. If you had like, if you had a Ruba set up, you could you could use a Ruba. Yeah. Uh, but what what other um, what other networks are, are there that are kind of integrated into this? Uh, we're getting a lot of interest around the um, unlicensed spectrum around uh, the uh, Sigfox and around the LoRa Alliance. Uh, there's a lot of traction in that, particularly in smart cities, uh, because of the ability to uh, penetrate quite deeply into buildings, um, and also the cost side of it. Uh, so we, we, that's why we're demonstrating it here. We've had a lot of traction on that. So, you know, as you rightly point out, we connect over any type. The LoRa and Sigfox type connections are relatively new. Two or three years ago, they didn't exist. Uh, so we're seeing a lot of interest in that because of the cost and because of the, the ability to penetrate via, uh, buildings and concrete and, and trucks and stuff. And, and you mentioned that uh, this is a, a fairly low cost solution for, for somebody who's deploying it. Is that, is, can, you, can you talk about that at all or is pricing not something we really, really talk about? We're actually really proud of the fact that um, we've been able to take these sort of assets and really commercialize it so that the cost comes down to the point where a client can uh, try it and launch a service and see if it ramps up and then to scale it up. If it doesn't ramp up, they just turn it off. We do that at about 10 cents per device, per year, completely as a service. We can go low on large scale rollouts, uh, but um, we've really managed to drop the price down because we can do this at scale. That, that's pretty cheap. It is very cheap. That's, that's like less than a penny a month. Yeah, we prefer to call it high value rather than cheap. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well thanks Nigel. It's a pleasure.